Okay, you can turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to talk about the uh, lying spirits that are starting to bring in the strong delusion. And uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit here. I'm not going to look at a whole lot of scriptures today in this little short mini study here. But I'm going to show you some interesting things you might not have seen before. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now you're probably familiar with this if you've been watching these videos for a while. The videos that the Lord helps me put out. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, And with all deceivable, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Um, people who don't believe the truth, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. John 17, uh, verse 17 says, uh, people that don't want to believe the truth, um, God will actually give them what they want. That's why the atheists find so much wrong with the King James Bible, find so many supposed contradictions in it, because that's what they want. They want excuses to explain away God and explain away coming judgment and things like that. So they'll, you know, they want it, uh, to go to hell, essentially, uh, by not believing the truth. Then God will oblige them. He'll give them what they want. And uh, religious people today, falsely so-called Christians, um, these modern professing ones and, and even a lot of the conservative types and things, that they're just, the fruit of the Spirit's not there. They're, they're really, really heretical in a lot of the doctrines that they believe. Um, those people there, they want the lies. They want the deception. I've run into them for years and years and years now. Um, a lot of the people that get into the attacks on the King James Bible, they don't want an, a perfect authority. They don't want that. This scares them. This is the kind of thing that they'll make fun of. Why? Because they want to be they want to be the one here on the on the top of all these books. They want to be the judge of all the books, and they want the crown on their head. That's the whole thing. They receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And then what's God do? Sends them strong delusion. But this passage here is specifically speaking about the end times. People that receive not the love of the truth, um, God will actually send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. Oh, God's not willing that, that any should perish. Yeah, but that all should come to repentance. When people aren't willing to repent of their wickedness and things, of their sins, uh, when they're not willing to do that, then God sends them strong delusion. And I believe in context, the strongest of the delusions is going to be the Antichrist, uh, the man of sin. Uh, you know, a lot of Bible believers have been back and forth. What is the strong delusion that God sends? Some say, well, UFO invasion after the rapture to explain the rapture away. Um, there, that could possibly be part of the whole thing. I don't know. You know, they could, uh, real, fake, whatever else, angelic, you know, beings with weird things and high tech stuff, Area 51 type of deal. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, others say, well, of course, the Antichrist, that's been talked about before. Yeah, possibly. Um, and I made a video years ago called, What If the Rapture is the Strong Delusion There? And that that, what the, the, the big cover up and, and everything that comes after the rapture is actually going to deceive people into thinking, you know, that they were saved or I, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But this little video here is not so much about um, what the strong delusion specifically is going to be in the future. It's more about how it's going to be brought to people. I'll show you one of the most interesting stories in the Old, Old Testament, all of the Old Testament. 1 Kings chapter 22. Go back there. I think I did a, uh, talk about this on weird Old Testament stories. And this is a definitely qualifies for a weird one because it gives you a peek into heaven and the fact that God controls everything. God controls Satan. God controls every single angel out there, be they fallen or whatever else. God controls everything. He's in charge. And this is a very interesting little peek into heaven and how God will deal with a nation that is in wickedness and sin and with people that have no desire for repentance. They don't receive love of the truth. 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 13. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. 
Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Now I get that thing all the time. Oh, Brother Brian, you're so negative. You, you, you're exposing this and exposing that and preaching against Just We'd like to just hear you say some good stuff. Well, you know, I have responded to that and said, well, I will try to do more good studies. But you know what? Um, my ministry is a lot more than just good things. Sometimes there's some negative stuff I need to talk about. But I get this, you know, that's from, you know, you know, good viewers and things like that. That's what I would call good criticism. But then I get the wicked, you know, modern, you know, Christian people. And they'll come along and they'll say that all I should preach is good, you know, type of thing. And um, so here we have my KI and they're coming to him and they're saying, hey, just just when you go into the king, just say good things are going to happen. Look what he does. Verse 14. And my KI said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. It's a good thing to say if you're a, a preacher or as a Christian, a Bible believing Christian even. Verse 15. Watch what he does here. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, My Kai, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered, and, and he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. <laughs> you can just hear him being sarcastic. Go and prosper, you know. And how do you know he's being sarcastic? Keep reading. Verse 16. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? He realizes he's being sarcastic with him. He realizes he's just faking him out. Go and prosper. Everything's going to be great, king. And he goes, Tell me the truth. Come on. Tell me the truth. Verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? <laughs> what was the prophecy about? He's saying the people of Israel there, they had no, no uh, sheep that have not a shepherd. There's no king. In other words, he's prophesying the king is going to get killed in battle. This is exactly what happens. Very interesting. But, you know, at first he comes and he goes, go and prosper. And the king goes, oh, come on, tell me the truth. He goes, okay, you're going to get killed in the battle. And the king says, I told you he was going to be negative. See, you know, that's why a lot of people don't want to talk about me or mention my name or bring me up in conversation and things like that because I'm too negative. Yeah. Verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. Here's where it's interesting. Remember the, the strong delusion and things like that? God sends strong delusion, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at this. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Hmm. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Isn't that interesting? A spirit comes and he's actually a, he goes out and he says, I'm going to be a lying spirit. I'm going to go into the mouth of all these different prophets and things out there and to deceive people. Why? Because Israel was wicked. And so God said, yeah, go ahead. Go on down there. Deceive them. Be a uh, strong delusion. I'll send you. Hmm. Because you see back in verse 13, if you remember there, it says, uh, Behold now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Isn't it interesting that they would say that? The prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Why did they all have the same mouth? Because it was the same spirit. Hmm. 
Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I have seen this thing in my time online in ministry, and even a little bit before I was even online in the ministry, um, things have changed quite a bit. Uh, way back when, when I first got on YouTube, there were very few videos against the what would be called the pre-trib rapture. I know that true biblical term is pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. But there were very few videos on the rapture issue, attacking the rapture, the pre-trib rapture. And uh, now it's just, the internet's just covered with them. And uh, these guys come out with these arguments and things, and I can say by God's grace and with God's help that I've never seen one argument that I haven't been able to answer with the Lord's help. Um, the Lord's put me into this position. The Lord's put me in a preaching and teaching position. And these guys, these these foolish posties, they come out with these just stupid arguments, and it's just like, no, it doesn't work because of this or here and that because of that. And the Lord's helped me to come out with with defense of the preacher rapture that I've never heard anybody preach on. And I'm going to be doing a study coming up, actually, on another angle to uh, prove that the body of Christ is gone before the time of Jacob's trouble starts. So, again, the Lord showed me another one. Um, and I give the Lord all the, the credit and all the praise for that. Um, I thank Him for using me the way that He has. But uh, what I'm saying is, I have seen this thing where it used to be just kind of you know, some nice stuff back and forth, you know, kind of exchanging of ideas and thoughts and whatever else. But it's turned very, very ugly, and the the rapture issue and a lot of other issues, dispensationalism, the Bible version issue, somewhat, you know, I'm still kind of shocked people even use the new versions after all that's come out. But um, a lot of the things of the uh, whether or not to stand for the nation of Israel's existence, you know, the replacement theology thing, you know, I mean, there's even stuff that's just so insulting. You know, I did this thing of a Christian will not. And there are so many people that have attacked me because I'm saying Christians don't swear. And I'm going, okay, um, I'm wrong for saying Christians don't swear. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, uh, so I shouldn't be deleting comments with profanity, apparently, because that must be a thing that Christians can do and you can use profanity and that's okay, apparently. I'm in the wrong for attacking people, banning them from my channel and deleting their comments because of profanity. I guess I shouldn't be doing that. I'm not a real Christian. It's weird. It's really, really, really weird. Uh, but, you know, I'm seeing all this stuff and, and it's just like it's getting to the point where no matter what you say as a Bible-believing Christian, people will just take your words and just twist them and contort them and it's like, I didn't say that at all. You know, people are coming out with stuff. I mean, you know, any of the exposed videos on me, it's just like they just take my words and just twist them and twist. And I'm going, I didn't. That's not even what I was saying. And I, if you watch the sermon, I'm, you know, they're taking stuff I'm saying out of context and they're twisting my words. And I remember years ago listening to to Peter Ruckman, and he said um, he was refuting this guy on hyper dispensationalism. I think it was E. C. Moore or something like that. And uh, this hyper dispensational wingnut. And the guy just was twisting scripture like crazy. And I remember Ruckman, he said, he said, you see that? He said, that's not the Holy Spirit. And it's not this guy's flesh. That's a different spirit. You can't get that screwed up. Just your own thoughts and whatever else. There are lying spirits that are now coming about. And, and I believe, and that was years and years ago. Hyper dispensationalists have always been messed up. But I'm saying... Um, as we progress and get closer to the rapture, I think that the lying spirits, God is actually starting to send that strong delusion already. And now you have all these people that years ago might have been open to hearing a sermon on, you know, the catching away of the bride of Christ. And as soon as you say rapture, they're just going, liar. I don't, I'm not even listening to the rest of it. And they, and they get all these weird things that they come up with, all these weird attacks and stuff. And, and what's going on? Well, they don't receive the love of the truth. So God is actually sending them strong delusion with these lying spirits. And, I mean, I, I try occasionally to listen. People send me a lot of stuff, you know, and they, they say, brother, could you check this video out? Hey, did you see this guy or did you see that guy? And A lot of times I start listening to these people and I'm just like, what? It, it, it confuses me and my mind starts going like, Wait a second there. And I'm trying to like write down the heretical points. And after a while, I just get so frustrated. And I say, I, I can't even listen to this guy anymore. 
I need to just shut this off. It's just, it just isn't, it's not getting in, so to speak. And by the same token, I can listen to a Baptist preacher or something like that. And, um, and he'll talk about the church and going to church and whatever else. And I go, yeah, I disagree with him on that. Um, but a lot of what he says is, is good. And, and, uh, you know, and I'll be like, yeah, well, amen. I mean, he convicted me on a few points and, you know, you can tell the Holy Spirit was speaking through him. You know, some brother from years ago or whatever else would listen to Lester Roloff or somebody like that. And he'll say about, you need to come to church. And I'll go, well, eh, you know, it's not really scriptural, brother. But he'll make a whole bunch of good points. I say, yeah, Lord was in that. Definitely. Um, you know, I get some of you and you, you learn th things from me. And you say, well, brother, I don't agree with what the one thing you said and whatever else. But I praise the Lord for you. Yeah, that's the point. But you'll get these other people. And it's just like you try listening to them and you're going, Huh? And they just, they contort and twist the scriptures. I think it's because it's a lying spirit. And you see all these guys, you know, the Stephen Anderson cult. And it just used to be Anderson. And then you had Roger Jimenez. And, and I think it was another guy or two. And now it's just like, they're just, they're like breeding, you know. <laughs> they're just like more and more of these little devil imps. And they all have the same thing that they're saying. The new Baptist movement, you know, and stuff. What is it? Um... The words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. That's what's going on. And that's why when you try to talk to these people, um, you can't get through to them. You can pin them with the scriptures. Uh, I know uh, uh, brother Joshua Alvarez, I remember he went back and forth a little bit. I watched some of his videos on him going back and forth with uh, Ed Fenninger. And it's just like he pinned him over and over and over again. Uh, you know, Brother Joshua was just pinning this faking her guy over and over and over again. And faking just, well, yeah, but he'll just twist the scripture and he'll just keep twisting and twisting and twisting. And it's funny because, you know, Brother Joshua was a younger guy, you know, younger man. And, and he's, I could just see he's getting frustrated, just like, don't you see this? It's right there in front of your face, you know? Yeah. And I've seen some of the other brethren and things too, a lot younger than me. And you get back and forth with these false prophets and you're just going, how can you twist this? How can you get the, what you're saying out of the text? It's not there. It doesn't even make any sense. How you tw And you just get like, Ugh. why? Because you're dealing with a lying spirit. God shall send strong delusion. It's not going to be just one boom, UFO invasion or boom, Antichrist or whatever. It's going to be a whole bunch of things leading up to that. And I think it's actually started already. Let's finish up here. Verse 24, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 24. But Zedekiah, the son of China, Chinana, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me? to speak unto thee. You get people slapping you in the face, you know, when you come out against their sin. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go in to an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon the governor of the city and to Josiah the king's son and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. So after he just said, you know, tell me the truth. What did the Lord tell you? He tells me the truth. Hey, King, you're going to die. And he goes, yeah, get him out of here. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be true. Isn't it interesting? Because it's the same thing as what we deal with with these false prophets. The rapture is going to happen. I, I don't care. You didn't prove anything. Well, the Lord says this, and let me show you from the scriptures. And you show them from the scriptures and they twist your words and make you say things that you didn't say and come to all these weird conclusions. And then they say, you're going to see it's not going to happen and you're going to lose your faith and you're going to this and you're going to that. You know, it's amazing. Verse 28, In Micaiah I said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. Hearken, O people, every one of you. Be careful about the lying spirits. There's plenty of them out there right now. Um, I mean, what can I tell you? You know, there's a lot of, of people that understand the Bible and you just go, yeah, you know, I, I look at Brother Brian's stuff and 
I don't have to agree with him on the insurance thing or whatever else. He's against that, and I don't think, I, don't, I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't have delivered, you know, my own child, or I don't agree with some of the stuff that they stand against the pharmaceutical thing or whatever. But or he's right on the rapture. He's right on the Bible. He's right on, you know, dispensationalism. He's right on salvation. Okay. But then you get the other people that are just going to twist my words and whatever else. Um, it's a lying spirit. And that's why I don't answer a lot of these people. Um, I've tossed around the idea of different times of maybe doing a, like instead of answers to your questions, say answers to my critics. And just let these people ask me questions and just, just you know, I've thought about that. because. But then I think to myself, you know, am I just kind of casting my pearls before swine there? You know, uh, because, you know, I preach the truth and they come out and they just they just dissect everything I say and just twist things and and contort things and I'm just going like and I can ban them from the channel and they sneak back in and if I could find out and ban them again you find out what their new channel name is and you know ban them again they'd come back in again it just you know <laughs> weird weird stuff so uh, there's a whole lot more I could say on that subject, but I wouldn't. I got two other studies I want to do today. A real big one coming up here, and um, going to be another proof of the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, the catching away being before the time of Jacob's trouble. Real good one, uh, very encouraging. So please be careful about the lying spirits out there. Um, a lot of these people are not just well. They have their opinions, and we have our opinions, and whatever else. Um, it's part of the strong delusion uh, that, that is being sent by God as judgment against those who do not receive a level of the truth. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.